Hi, in this short video we're going to take a look at how to organize your portfolio and get all your work linked up for the semester. So to start with, scroll down to the Tools for Visualization Information <coughs> section. Uh, notice that the text here may be different or probably is different than what you have on your page. So you want to edit that text to match this. The reason is that over time, you know, technologies change and some of the things that we might have done in earlier classes or intended to do have been phased out. New things have been introduced. So also notice that under alternate products, this does not match the typical form. And we'll look at how to uh, present this information in, in just a minute. Okay, first thing, to get your map project up, you're going to go to Google Tour Builder. You can see I'm already in the tour, but if you weren't, you would simply go in, say, My Tours, and open up the tour. Now that you're in the tours, if you're working, you can hit the Share button, and that's the link you want to use. So just select it and copy it by whatever means um, you'd like to use. So right-click and copy or Control-C, just say Done. When you come back here, you're going to fill out all this information, of course, as you've done with previous courses. You can look up here for, uh, you know, a model of what you've done. Um, but let's just say, and of course, you'd include information on your topic and you'd include information on your audience. But you would take this project title up here and simply establish that link and apply it. Now that should work for you when somebody clicks on here. It's going to, well, it's going to open their tour. In this case, I'm getting a redirect notice. But if I click the link, I'll go right out there to the tour anyway. Okay, secondly, you've got your video project. So, of course, you're going to put your project title in, topic, audience. And then the trick here is when you first get to YouTube, you're of course going to sign in. You're going to make sure to switch accounts to the appropriate account. Okay, because it's easy to get the wrong link. The second thing you need to do is you need to come in and go to your channel. So you're actually looking at the channel that you want other people to uh, be able to access at that point. You can copy the link up at the top. And again, just come back here and establish that as the link. Apply it. Now, I'm doing it right in this mode. If you wanted to, you could go to preview. This is what your uh, users would really see. And, and they can click on there and they'll be right into your YouTube channel. Okay, now we come to the third section. Let me go back to edit mode. We come to this third section, and this is a little more complicated. We've got three alternate products, and instead of extending this down, we're going to look at housing those uh, in a different area. And there's two ways you can do this. You could create a separate Google site to house these products because we're going to embed them. We're going to actually display them on the page instead of, of links. And we're going to have some text on the page, so it just really would would disrupt this design. So you can either do an entire new website or because Google's nesting capability, the ability to put pages under pages, under pages if you want, so to build a more robust navigation structure, that ability has recently improved. So we can do that right in your portfolio if you'd prefer. And I think that's probably the simplest way. As I said, you're welcome to make a new site and link to it if you'd like. But let's try it the other way just to show you how to do it. So I'm going to come to Pages. I'm going to click on the Coursework page because that's this page. And I would like to organize anything to do with this page under it. Okay, so in, in not embedded, but um, nested underneath this particular page. So you're going to select this one. And you're just going to say create a subpage. Now, it's possible as this expands in other courses, especially with uh, Tools for Developing Instruction coming up, that you're going to be doing this for other courses. So it's probably important to identify which course this is. So I'm just going to say Tools, Viz, Alternate Products. Okay, so if I do decide to do other subpages under coursework, ones for, for tools for developing instruction, it'll be evident which page is which. Okay, now of course, without going too much into design here, 
Um, we know that with the header you can go to header type and you can keep it this way if you want. But if you want as a subpage for it to be smaller, you can simply change it to title only. That's up to you. Um, and now that we're here, we can use our tools to create uh, the space for those products. So I'm going to put a text box in here first and I'm going to, let's pretend, um, okay, I can uh, just say project, topic, audience, whoop, turn that into a bulleted item. That's okay, that's kind of what I intended to do here either, uh, to do here anyway, and you can, Okay, then you can do any formatting you want to do. I could make this a heading. I could, um, you know, put a project title, a topic, the audience. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little introduction. So I want to give um, my objectives in uh, this project was designed. So you're going to give some objectives and talk a little bit about the format that you've used. And in other words, what about an infographic as an alternate style of visualizing and presenting information might be useful to students? I mean, there might be aspects of novelty, of you know, the fact that it summarizes key facts. You can also talk about what some of the limitations are. And it doesn't have to be extensive, um, but a good short paragraph really describing the most important things. A couple of sentences is fine. Okay, now when you get there, when you finish this, we're going to insert a copy of the infographic itself. So we're not going to do this for all your uh, projects right now, but I'm going to show you the two options that you really have. Okay, so for infographics, I'm over here at Canva. That's where I did my infographic. I'm looking at my design here and I opened it up. Now, if I want to embed this in the web page so that you can actually see this thing in my site, what I have to do is I can go to share and it's going to give me some options. I can share with individual people. That's not what I want to do. Uh, social media, I can put a link in there. And that's really what I want to do is I want to get this link. I do want to make sure that anyone with this link can only view it. And I can copy that, come back to my portfolio here, and now I'm going to embed a URL, and I'm going to put that address in there, and you can see that it's, it's found it. And I insert it, and now I can do all the things that I would normally do. I can, um, you know, drag this thing over and center it if I'd like. Okay, so it, it, it posts my, it embeds this right here so I can actually uh, see the, the finished product, which is nice. Okay, the other option I have, and let me come down here and I'm going to insert another text box. And let's just say that this is the word cloud. I'm not going to go through the process of you know, uh, uh, the process that we've already gone through up here. So, you know, it's basically the same kind of design, same theory here. And this time, perhaps my product, I don't have a URL for it. All I have is an image for it. And let's look at the word cloud as an example of that. So pretend this is my word cloud. Um, what are my options here? Well, one option I have is to export it or save it as a ping or a JPEG. These are two good formats for the, um, for the internet. So I'm just going to say save it as a ping. I would, you can see that I've already saved it to my desktop. So word cloud ping right here. So I've been through that process before. And then what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to import that into my Google Drive. So if I come up to images here, see it doesn't give you an upload option per se. It says, you know, URL search your albums or Google Drive. So there's no direct upload which is fine. I'm just going to go to the Google Drive where I have everything stored. 
and I'm going to go into, in this case I would go into classroom. I'm going to put it in class resources, but you could put it anywhere on your drive. So this is something that we're doing here in week 12. New file upload desktop there it is word cloud ping now it's in my Google Drive so it's available to me and so I can come back to my portfolio and just say I'd like to put an image in for my portfolio I'll even go to recent it will figure out that I just uploaded that and there's my word cloud I'm going to drag that out and make it a little bigger then I'm going to center it and really that's about it I'm not going to go through the process of doing your third one um, because you're really gonna probably either use this images option or this embed URL option to get whatever you want out on the page depending on what the site you're working with to produce your product offers okay and you can decide on the best way to do that now last thing to do here is is let me just preview this page for a second Okay, so this is the page in preview mode, meaning this is the URL. And I'm going to copy that, come out of there, and I'm going to come back to the coursework page. Now, one thing we didn't really look at, but um, you can notice is as you, as you created that page underneath coursework, the menu adjusted here. So now if I click on that, I will be on my Tools Viz Alternate Products page. If I come back and click, click coursework itself, I'm back on the main page. And even though people can use that as a navigation structure, A, they may not be aware of it. They might not know that this page is what contains your alternate products. People don't always go through the menus. And secondly, we've kind of established this, this process of coming into each class, finding the link next to project, and accessing the coursework that way. So what we do want to do is we want to come down here and take this and actually link it to that page. So there are several ways to get there, but in this way, someone's going to find the link where they expect it. So if I go to preview at this point and click on that, it's going to it's going to get you right out to that page that has the has the information on it. Now will they have to use the main menu to get back? Yes, more than likely they will. And that's, that's fine. It's just that since we've established this pattern, we want to be consistent with it so as not to confuse your users. Okay, if you have any questions or run into any difficulties, of course, email me um, so that we can get all that worked out. And good luck with the project this week.